Kim Baker, and I'd like to first thank all of you for being here tonight and for holding the hearing here in Columbia in the evening. I know it's hard to sit through all this. Um, I also, it occurs to me that I'd also like to thank Cross Development because in my 13 years of, as a resident of Columbia, including five working at Columbia State Historic Park, I cannot remember a single issue in this town where so many people have the same uh, opinion. Um, <clears throat> so I spent a lot of time driving today. I drove... I drove uh, through Jackson to Sacramento, then through Marysville, Yuba City, then back down through Elk Grove, Natomas. And after all of that driving today, um, as I came back up into Tuolumne County, I, I exhaled and I, it feels like such a very different world when you come up here. And this is why so many people do come here and this is part of why we are preserving uh, this town as Columbia State Historic Park and as a National Historic Landmark District. It means something. And this uh, development is inconsistent um, in many ways, but most notably to me, it's about four times the size of the average other building in town, which makes it uh, inappropriate. Um, Columbia State Historic Park is an economic engine for the county, and I hope that uh, you will uphold the planning, uh, uh, planning commission's decision to help preserve uh, this tremendous public investment we have here. So thank you very much. My name is Nick and I have lived here for about 16 years now. Um, I used to own a retail store in Modesto and after 10 years of success there was a competing chain store that opened up not too far away. Effectively took half of my business. I moved here instead. That store that took half of my business went out of business a few years later and that building is still vacant. Now what I'm, I'm not necessarily worried that Dollars General would go vacant after a few years. I'm concerned about the people that surround it, the two markets that do business there that are around it. Um, one thing I also wanted to say is uh, a proponent earlier said that they were concerned that maybe this was because of who the tenant is, why we're all here. I think you could build an in and out burger there and most people here would still be here. Well, maybe some. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I went to Ireland a few years ago and I went to go meet the maker of an instrument that I play that was made in Ireland. And uh, he asked me where I'm from and I said, Columbia, California. And he said, uh, oh, that's where High Noon was filmed. Can you do me a favor? Can you get me some candy from that candy store in Columbia? <laughs> and can you throw a couple rocks in there too, just plain old rocks? He didn't ask me to throw a rock in there from Dollar General. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Jody Barnett, and I'm here to respectfully oppose the appeal of the Planning Commission's decision to deny SDP 14-003 and CUP 14-012. It's up to you to protect the rural and historic character of our community for today and for the future. Unfortunately, if you grant this appeal, then you will show the residents of their Columbia that their will does not matter, and you will set a horrible precedent that would allow for ad additional developments of this kind to change the landscape and reshape our rural identity. The signage alone, which requires its own conditional use permit, is not in keeping with the requirements placed on other businesses operating on this scenic byway. The magnitude of the proposed signage would seem to give Dollar General an unfair advantage over other businesses and shouldn't be up for discussion. Columbia has its own distinct character and that's why people visit and return. While you may have to ignore the negative impact that Dollar General could pose to existing businesses, Columbia's economy, cultural community, and historic atmosphere go hand in hand. Small town business owners in and around the state park have worked hard to grow their businesses 
to have the landscape sullied by this type of development. The design adaptations do not go nearly far enough to make the store fit in and to its proposed surroundings. And the multi-building facade does not change the fact that the store is over 9,000 square feet and nearly three times larger than any existing retail space in Columbia. At the last Planning Commission meeting where this project was denied, the developer stated that they had worked very hard to come up with the current design adaptations specifically to fit into the design review guide. But later he then stated that they put the same store in weed and it looked great with Mount Shasta as a backdrop. So it seems that the design you are voting for today is in fact cookie cutter. It's good for weed, it must be Columbia, good for Columbia, but that just isn't so. This is a unique place with unique people and once that is lost, soon our tourism dollars will follow. Finally, and most importantly, it is imperative that if this project is approved, either Cross Development or Dollar General be made responsible for the restoration of the property once Dollar General is gone. It is an inevitability that in the future Dollar General will go out of business, pull out, or cease to exist, and when that happens, there will be a large, useless, empty building left as a mark of blight on our historic corridor. I would also like to note that this community would have not had the same opportunity to appeal this decision if it were not clear that the appeal fee was paid by us on time. Please do the job you are elected to and protect our historic corridor and the rural character of our community for the future. Just say no to Dollar General and deny this appeal. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marge Berry. I was uh, born at Kaiser and Walnut Creek in 1957 and raised in Alamo. In 1989, I moved to rural Prospect, Oregon in the mountains. I bought a log home. And uh, I recently decided I was tired of the mountains and looked for a place to live. And I ended up here. I just moved here in October because of its ambient, uh, everything about the town. Um, I could have moved anywhere. I could have moved to Idaho, Minnesota, New York, but I chose here because of the ambience, what it has to offer. I never planned to be in a dollar store, general store, Dollar General, um, I, and never will be. And I don't think it is needed in this community. I can't see anyone in this room going to the Dollar General to buy anything. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Cheryl Simons. I moved here uh, last year to run a local business with my fiance. Uh, two businesses, one is the Columbia Motel, the other one is 49er Mining Supply, which are both very um, fitting to this community. Um, I also work at Claude's Market. I have been very welcomed by the wonderful community who also believes in Columbia, but more importantly lives here. I am fully vested in this community. I believe in the progress of Columbia and its history, and that does not include Dollar General. While we do have flushing toilets, the history here is priceless. We also have many motel guests from all over the world asking about Dollar General and what's going on with the signs that are being posted. They speak of concerns with Dollar General moving in as they visit here uh, because of the history and to support our local economy is why they come, not to visit commercialization. They want to take a step back in time and the design of a building does not tell a history of the past but tells a future of what's to come. No to Dollar General. There is a proposal to a public equestrian center which is very much the economic growth Columbia needs. We need to support that kind of business that fits into the 1850s identity. Also, the five to eight jobs created with Dollar General doesn't even come close to the amount of jobs lost, not to mention the businesses lost, including the loss of tax revenue for the county. There are not, a, there are not unlimited funds in this county, and especially in Columbia. Dollar General is not going to create any more tax revenue, um, but take from other businesses. Columbia needs to move forward, but we should be moving forward by moving into the past. We are an 1850s town and should remain as such. Thank you. Hello. I just wanted to get my two cents worth in. 
You're the representatives. Are you lucky? Look at these people. They're all here to stand up for their community. I moved here in 1982, and I've been around and about since. I drove through, and I was struck by how special this place is. And I knew this is where I wanted to be. We have a stagecoach. We have people riding in town. We have things no one has. This is the most unique community I've ever been in. And I have watched this community protect it, save it, and hang on to their local state park aspect. They're wonderful. You're lucky. Please, support them. Say no. I don't even know why they want to be here. They don't look like they're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, I am Greg Martin, and I am the Sector Superintendent for Columbia State Historic Park. The experience of visitors to Columbia begins far from the park's borders, and this sense of place begins when visitors get off the main highways of Highway 4 or Highway 49 and drive down the winding Parrots Ferry Road. In 2015, Columbia State Park was a destination for nearly 12,000 students who enrolled in one of our 382 educational programs. This is in addition to the nearly 7,000 students from the local Sierra Outdoor School. Of course, many more students visit Columbia but do not formally enroll in a program. In addition to the programs for students, 233 family interpretive programs and events were given with nearly 10,000 600 people participating. While many visitors come to the park with no agenda, many visitors come to the park specifically for those programs and events. In 2015, nearly 22,500 visitors participated in nearly 615 educational programs. The devotion of nearly 200 park volunteers is a great example of how important Columbia State Historic Park is. These 200 individuals volunteered nearly 13,300 hours, so students and other visitors get an experience that is as authentic as possible. We are not against business or Dollar General. However, we, like the majority of community members you see here today, do not see it as appropriate to have this project in Columbia. It's a special place, a living example of the past. We have the opportunity to protect and preserve what Columbia means locally, statewide, and internationally. State parks and Tuolumne County cannot do this alone. It takes a collaborative effort of community, local government, and state parks to help ensure visitors get the full experience of their paths. Let's make our community members proud of us tonight. Let's make sure Columbia lives into the future as an example that's not fragmented by commercial development of this magnitude. Future generations should enjoy this living town and its special characteristics that bring people from all over the world to absorb the rich history that this town represents. Thank you. to speak before you this evening. My name is Leslie Hartzell. I'm the Department Preservation Officer for California State Parks and the Cultural Resource Division Chief for the Department. In this capacity, I'm here to offer comment on the Dollar General Store Development Project under consideration. As early as 1928, Columbia was noted in a Frederick Law Olmsted Park Survey as the gold rush town to preserve. As he put it, for the very reason that the people of Columbia have been appreciative of the historic and picturesque qualities of the town and have felt a real local pride in preserving them, something you've seen clearly tonight. Columbia became a state park in July 1945. With the signature of Governor Earl Warren, he noted, 
that Columbia has more and better historic resources for the Gold Rush era than any other place in California. Columbia is recognized as being of national significance and possesses exceptional value or quality in illustrating and interpreting the heritage of the United States. A concern was noted in the 1978 general plan that with the growing pressures of encroachment, encroaching development and inappropriate commercialism in and around the park, the people of California and the nation are on the verge of losing the Columbia experience. Fast forward to 2014, when award-winning preservation architect Mike Garavaglia noted in a report that he produced for us on the cultural landscape of Columbia State Historic Park, that today, the setting around Columbia is still largely rural in character. The modern buildings and traffic along the edge of the town encroach upon its historical setting, and the spread of development along the edges of the town threatens the integrity of that feeling. I'd like to end tonight by reiterating sentiments expressed in the park's 1978 general plan in that the department supports Tuolumne County in its efforts to promote high standards of land development and preservation around Columbia and will work with local governments and organizations to retain the park's historic rural setting. Thank you for your time. Honorable Madam Chairman and members of the Board of Supervisors, I am Gary Newbert, a member of the uh, Ad Hoc Committee to Keep Columbia Historic. The committee is here tonight to present findings which significantly support the denial of the Dollar General Store Project in Columbia. You, the Board of Supervisors, for this appeal hearing of the Dollar General Store Project have been provided by staff recommendations for findings for approval, which has four findings, each with subparts. Staff has also provided recommendations for denial, which has two findings, each with subparts. We respectfully submit that the proposed project is not consistent with the current Tuolumne County General Plan, Chapter 15, Columbia Community Plan, as stated by staff in their findings for approval of this project. We also believe that there are a number of goals, policies, and implementation programs in Chapter 15, Columbia Community Plan, that were not included by staff when they selected the two findings for denial of the project. We would like to take this opportunity to present our point of view of additional findings not reported by staff, which we see as significant additional evidence for denial of this project. We have a series of speakers who will present facts and, and our findings for denial of this project, each within their allotted three-minute time. This will be followed by concluding comments to emphasize our points that denial of this project is in the best interest of the people of Columbia. Denial of this project is necessary to keep the Parrots Ferry Road gateway compatible with the Columbia State Historic Park, and denial of this project is desirable for the economy of Tuolumne County to retain Columbia as a unique and attractive tourist destination uncluttered with inappropriate commercial development. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rob Gorham. I own and operate 49er Mining Supplies, and I'm also the owner of the Columbian Motel here in the local area, and I support our community. Here are some excuse me, here are some applicable statements quoted from the introduction chapter 15 Columbia plan. There are no large scale commercial centers within the boundaries of the community plan. The city of Sonora provides the closest general services. Considerable terrible territory, considerable resources and considerable visitors. We all take it into heart and given their due into the preparation of the Columbia community plan to ensure the economic viability and natural beauty of the community in Columbia for the years to come. Goals, practices, and implementations of programs. Goal 15A, preserve and enhance the community identity of the Columbia area. Policy 15A1, retain the historic gold rush character of the Columbia community. Policy 15A2, maintain a rural small town atmosphere of the Columbia area by preserving a mixture of urban and non-urban land uses found in this area. 
Policy 15A5 encouraged new development to be designed in a manner that is compatible with Columbia's historic agricultural heritage. Policy 15A6 required new development within the design review area to comply with the community design guide to preserve the historic of Columbia. Policy 15A8 protect and improve the scenic quality along the Paris Ferry Road corridor as the gateway to the Columbia Historic State Park. Our committee's finding is this. Clearly, the intent of Goal 15A and its policy is to recognize the fact that Columbia is a world-class historic site which depicts the best provided history of California's gold rush. The gold rush is the greatest mass migration from all people all over the world in history up to that point until now time. Visitors come to Columbia and California, United, the United States, and many overseas countries to have the real gold rush experience. Columbia is a special place a true asset to the Tuolumne County, which we must preserve for generations to come. Any inappropriate commercial development in, in or around Columbia would destroy the ambience, the gem of the southern mines. The Dollar General store is definitely inappropriate, and it would destroy the ambience. Commercial development to be located so close to our historic state park. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General. Thank you. I'm Dana Harvey. I live in Columbia, just down the road from the proposed site, and I also work at Claude's Columbia Market. I'm Dana Harvey. Implementation Program 15AA Design Guide. Continue to maintain a design guide for new development that reflects the historic charm of Columbia and require all new development within the design review area to be consistent with the Columbia Design Guide. Our committee's finding. The Columbia Design Guidelines were updated in 2013 by the Columbia Area Planning Commission and adopted by the current five members of the Board of Supervisors on May 21, 2013. Implementation Program 15AA requires new development to be consistent with the Design Guide. This is a much stronger statement than the notion that the guidelines are just guides that are not necessary to, fe to be followed absolutely. The Dollar General Store is not consistent with many of the Columbia Design Guidelines. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General Project. Implementation Program 15AB, Design Review Area. Continue to maintain areas surrounding the State Historic Park and within the Columbia Community Plan boundaries as a design review area in order to encourage the design of new development in a manner that complements the character of the State Park, our committee's finding. The design review area exists around the Columbia State Historic Park and includes the parcel for the proposed Dollar General Store, which is zone C1DMXR. It is in the Columbia Design Review Area, shown on page three, <laughs> Columbia Design Guidelines. New development on this parcel should complement the character of the State Park the huge structure of 9,100 square feet for Dollar General Store certainly does not complement the smaller structures in the State Park. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General Store. Thank you. Chairwoman Brennan and members of the board, my name is Chris Barsanti and I've lived in Columbia since 1979. Our committee finds that we agree with policy 15A4, which is require commercial signs to be compatible with the historic character of Columbia. The proposed Dollar General signs do not comply with the goals, policies, and implementation programs of the Columbia Area Plan and the Columbia Design Guidelines. As staff has noted in their recommended finding A for denial of the conditional use permit, the proposed signage is not consistent with policy 15A4 of the Columbia Community Plan. The proposed signs do not meet this requirement. There is nothing historic about these signs. They are the exact same signs that one can see on any Dollar General store in any town USA. We concur with the staff finding for denial 2A because the Dollar General 
signs are not consistent with policy 15A4. Implementation program 15AG signage requires signs within the Columbia Community Plan boundaries to comply with the specifications of the county zoning ordinance title 17 of the county ordinance code except as follows. Design and appearance of signs shall conform, shall conform to the Columbia design guidelines. Our committee's finding. As presented by staff in their recommended finding B for denial of CUP 14-012, design criteria number 10 of the Columbia design guidelines states that, quote, small well-designed signs attract the eye and are supportive of existing local architectural character, close quote. The proposed Dollar General store signs are not small, nor do they conserve the architectural style of the Columbia community. The applicant has applied for an additional 50% increase, 195 square feet, 130 square feet, in the amount of signage a building of their size is permitted. The sizes of the proposed signs are anything but small. Rather than small, they are excessive in size, particularly when measured against the other commercial signs along Parrots Ferry Road. Neither do they support the local architectural character of Columbia. They do not, quote, have the appearance of wood, metal, or stone, close quote. Nor do they, quote, have a hand-painted appearance, close quote. Both these phrases are part of design criteria number 10 of the Columbia Design Guidelines. We concur with the staff finding for denial 2B because the Dollar General signs are not consistent with the Columbia Design Guidelines and Implementation Program 15 AG. That's it. Thank you. I'm Leslie Davis, and I've been a homeowner in Columbia for 10 years. Implement implementation Program 15 AH, Landscaping Requirements require new development within the Columbia Community Plan boundaries to comply with the county's landscape ordinances and guidelines, except as provided as follows. Number three, ponderosa pine and native oaks are species of local character for the Columbia community. Inclusion of these species in landscape plans shall be encouraged. Our committee's finding. There are eight mature, live ponderosa pines that would be removed for the project during a time when ponderosa pines are dying all over the county. On page 53 of the negative declaration, the third paragraph on the bottom states that actual installation of landscaping will be deferred until phase three water conservation measures are lifted. There is uncertainty when, if ever, the lost ponderosa pines will be replaced. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General project. Implementation Program 15AI, new development within community plan boundaries. Review new development within the design control combining district and Parrots Ferry Road corridor for its compatibility with and its impact on the historic structures within the state park. Our committee's finding. Over the years since Columbia became a state historic park in 1945, many experts have studied the area and made recommendations. In his 1948 report, well-known landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. recommended landscape easements. And as stated in the Columbia State Park General Development Plan published in 1979, just 36 years ago, Quote, Columbia has more and better historic resources from the gold rush era than any other place in California. However, with the growing pressures of encroaching development and inappropriate commercialism in and around the park, the people of California and the nation are on the verge of losing the Columbia experience. Let's not discount those experts. Putting a Dollar General store on Paris Ferry Road at Hauser Lane is aesthetically unappealing and its large size will overpower the historic buildings of our gem, Columbia State Historic Park. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General Project. Thank you. Uh, Leanna Rhodes, 
Parrott's blacksmith, 18 years, 20-year uh, resident. Implementation program 15.8K, design control, combining, and Parrott's Ferry Road. Consider designating all properties fronting Parrott's Ferry Road as design control combining in order to encourage the design of new development in a manner that enhances the, quote, gateway entrance into the town site of Columbia. Our committee's findings, the large, quote, big box nature of Dollar General store, typical of commercial centers in large cities, is what the tourists come to Columbia for a gold rush experience are trying to get away from. It should not be the major structure they see just before entering the Columbia Historic State Park on the Parrots Ferry Road, quote, gateway. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General project. Thank you. Hi, I'm Claudia Carlson with Quads Columbia Market. My wife and I own that. I'm here to talk about the economic viability of our community. Goal of 15B states to provide a mechanism for growth in an orderly manner that balances the needs and interests of the Columbia community. Policy 15B1 states to coordinate development in the Columbia area that meets the needs of our community. Our committee's findings, the economic needs of the Columbia community are very simple. We need local businesses aligned with the 1850s spirit. Local works. According to the Civic Economics of Retail Studies from 2002 through 2012, which I gave Bev earlier, the overall impact of local business as compared to chain stores per $100 is the surplus of local businesses to the local economy, economy is 58% over chain store businesses. When square footage is concerned, that surplus goes up to 70%. When we consider the recirculation of dollars around our community, Local business dollars recirculate four times more than chain store dollars. Now, no one expected this huge discrepancy at the beginning of this study, including the authors of this study, that finding out how much wealthier communities are with local businesses as opposed to chain store businesses was a shock. This finding supports a denial of the Dollar General store. 15B Three say, states to encourage the development of commercial development which provides economic opportunities to the community while preserving and enhancing the quality of life in Columbia. Our committee's findings. Not only does our quality of life revolve around the 1850s, but our economic viability does as well. Formula retail is not an 1850s creation. If we Columbians wanted this type of formula retail, we never would have chosen Columbia as our home. Economic opportunities defined by Wikipedia is, quote, an act to mobilize the human and financial resources to combat poverty, unquote. Cross development said the Dollar General will provide entry level jobs. However, most of the DG employees in Tuolumne County are between the ages of 20 and 60, working full time while still needing government assistance to survive. Working for a corporation is different from working for a mom and pop. Mom and pops, or in our case, mom and moms, businesses offer their employees benefits that chain stores do not. The creation of new jobs cannot be counted unless they are offset by the number of jobs lost and businesses closed, which has happened in nearly every community where the Dollar General has gone in. Also, all profits from the Dollar General will be shipped back to Tennessee instead of recirculating the before mentioned four more times in Tuolumne County. It is clear that the major benefit of this project is to the developer and their tenant, not to the residents and visitors of Columbia. This finding also supports the denial of the Dollar General project. Columbia Market. <clears throat> Thank you for being here in our town tonight. Implementation Program 15B.D, Provision of Commercial Amenities, require new commercial development to provide the following. Number three, parking lots should be encouraged to be constructed compatible, compatible with the natural lay of the land and should be located behind central buildings 
or should be screened along lot lines. Our committee's findings, the Dollar General Landscape Plan, page eight of the negative declaration, shows this project will not have the parking located behind the central building. Landscape screening will be used along lot lines instead. However, on page 53 of the negative declaration, third paragraph from the bottom states that, quote, actual installation of landscaping to be deferred until phase three water conservation measures are lifted, unquote. With ongoing drought conditions likely, lot screening with landscape vegetation will be an ongoing problem. <clears throat> Park cars at the Dollar General store would be very visible from Parrots Ferry Road. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General project. And since I have several seconds left, I'd like to give my two cents. <clears throat> um, this, this is uh, something that a very wise woman that I've known for 26 years uh, told me, and <clears throat> makes a lot of sense. Building a Dollar General in Columbia is akin to building a Walmart in Yosemite. <clears throat> Can it be done? Of course. We humans are capable of worse atrocities, but should it be done? Absolutely not. And that was quoted by Claudia Carlson. Excuse me. I have a request uh, for the owner of the Honda Civic license plate 4HTX608. It's blocking a gate and needs to be moved. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Marilyn Fulham. Implementation program 15BH mixed use development. Encourage compact, pedestrian oriented mixed use development to promote a more efficient use of infrastructure social interaction and com complement our historic town patterns. Our committee's findings. The Dollar General store is not compact and has not been designed to be pedestrian oriented. There are no planned pedestrian walkways across Parrots Ferry Road near the proposed Dollar General store. Widening of Parrots Ferry Road and 40 parking spaces in front of the building does not complement our historic town pattern nor is it consistent with Caltrans Complete Streets Program, which recommends streets diet and walkable communities in line with placemaking and context-sensitive solutions. This finding supports the denial of the Dollar General Project. Goal 15C, promote the development of commercial and industrial businesses to meet the present and future needs of Columbia's residents and visitors. Implementation Program 15C, F, Retention of commercial zoning. Encourage small scale, pedestrian friendly commercial development on existing commercially zoned lands to provide basic services and thereby increase convenience and independence of movement for community members. Our committee's findings. The Dollar General store will be the first big box store typical of large cities to be located in Columbia. It certainly is not a small scale, pedestrian friendly commercial mm -hmm. development when compared to other commercial development in the Columbia area. Examples of appropriate commercial development would be local homegrown enterprises such as farmers markets, grocery stores on the scale of Claude's Market or bar barn rights in Jamestown, breweries ca and cafes. Independent movement for community members must reflect a slower pace and way of life absent of commercialism and hype. We concur with the staff finding for denial 1A because the Dollar General store size is not consistent with implementation program 15 CF. Good evening. Uh, thank you for coming to Columbia, and uh, you're getting quite a welcome, I see. Um, I get the boring part. I'm going to talk about traffic, specifically the intersection of Springfield Road and Parrots Ferry Road. As you can see from the aerial that Bev just handed out, um, the uh, Springfield Road is the chief access to Columbia from the west. Uh, it's critical during the AM peak period where the current level of service is C, which is, of course, fair to Midland. The, addi the uh, addition of the Dollar General will put uh, southbound traffic during the AM peak period head on against the 
uh, westbound traffic at Springfield. So the good news is there's an ultimate mitigation for that, and that is the realignment of Springfield Road. The bad news is the realignment of Springfield Road is not on the, t the current uh, countywide uh, circulation uh, improvement plan. Um, it is on the 2010 um, uh, Columbia master plan, but it's not on the countywide plan. So when the realignment of Springfield Road happens, it's problematic. Um, it's, it's further complicated by the fact that the land that needs to be taken to uh, achieve the realignment of Springfield Road uh, is owned by the state of California, by the, the state park, um, who's on record as opposing the project tonight. So you have a mitigation for the project is the realignment of Springfield Road, which is may not ever happen, and if so, will happen in, in the far future. So I would suggest that there be at least one condition if you decide to approve this, and that is that the project not go forward until that realignment of Springfield Road happens. Until then, you have a, a, a dangerous head-on head situation with the people coming into town in the morning on Springfield Road, taking a left to come to work at the school, at the airport, or at the park, and the people coming southbound from the, from the north to turn into Dollar General. They're sharing the same two-way left turn lane. So uh, I would recommend that if you do approve it, keep, keep that condition. Okay, I got a few seconds left, so I'm gonna make one other uh, condition of approval. Retail cyclical. There may not be, a, there may be a Dollar General store next year. There may not be a Dollar General store over there four years from now. I suggest a condition of approval when, the, the, when there's no longer a Dollar General, tear it down and haul it away. Thank you. Uh, my name is Phil Reese and I am a 22 year resident of Columbia. I was also on the Columbia Planning Commission for 12 years. And then during that time, the commission rewrote this chapter 15 of the Columbia Community Plan. So I'm quite familiar with it. If you haven't been keeping score tonight, I want to remind you, staff found two findings for denial. Our committee has found nine policies and 10 implementation plans for denial of this project. We've, our committee's position is that the denial of the project's in the best interest of the people of Columbia, as you've, hear, as you've heard from the presentations tonight. Denial of the project is necessary to keep the Parrots Ferry Gateway compatible with Columbia State Historic Park. Denial of this project is desirable for the economy of Tuolumne County as a unique and attractive world tourist destination with inappropriate development. It wants to be uncluttered by inappropriate development. You, you, you Board of Supervisors created one planning commission out of many, and it's a hand-picked group, and they're very much a part of this community. As you are well aware, they denied the, uh, the project at the commission hearing back in December. This project was denied by a solid 5-2 vote of the planning commission. We can draw an analogy here to the judgments made by football officials these days when they say the ruling on the field stands unless there's indisputable evidence to overturn it. Is there indisputable evidence tonight to overturn the Tuolumne County Planning Commission's decision to deny the Dollar General Store in Columbia? Our committee emphatically says no. We ask you to uphold your Planning Commission's decision for denial and take, when you take your vote later this evening. Again, I want to thank you for being attentive to our committee's thoughtfully prepared presentation tonight. And we've done it in three minute segments and it's probably run about 30 minutes. Maybe it's time for a break. <laughs> um, speaking to the break, I'm very pleased to stand before the board tonight Two and a half hours in that bleachers has rendered my rear end pretty leaden. <laughs> so I'm pleased to be standing. I have a few random unprepared thoughts um, to share. Um, in regards to the number of uh, the inexpensive stores in the county and the planned build out, my take is seven of them. And at 49,000 or so people, do we need one store per 7,000 residents or visitors? 
I'm impressed with the developer and the Dollar General's conceit that they think we need four or five Dollar General stores in the county. I don't think we do, but that's just my opinion. Um, in regards to the uh, tax revenues that the developer said that we would, the county would generate in, instead of the city of Sonora, um, wherever the, the stores in the county, there's going to be the same dollar amount generated as far as taxes go. Regarding the uh, tactics of what I understand is before the board tonight is a, uh, uh, a decision to, to build the building, yes or no, and it's separated from whether the store is there or not. The building is before you, the store will come later. If you allow it to be built, I'm sure that the dollar uh, store will come. And that's not something I'm in favor of. Thank you. My name is Vida Moody, and uh, I'm the partner with the RM Grocery Store. Uh, one thing I want to know is you guys are for the people, and everybody here says very clearly that we don't want our dollar general. Then I think it's very, I will say, common sense to say against it because everybody in the room says no. Second thing. Dollar General on the Parrot Ferry Road will need expansion of the road. And Dollar General says they will put 34,000. Even just to renovate by small parking lot, it takes much more than $34,000. So who will pay for the extra dollar amount which we will put in expanding the roads? No matter the people in the county. So we are paying for Dollar General expansion. Second thing, uh, Dollar General has underestimated water usage. Look at the, just go to the Jamestown Road, Dollar General, and you will find how much water usage they are using. Second thing, they say sell tax revenue. Again, I don't have to say anything. Go to Jamestown and see how much sell tax they are paying and how much revenue we will got more from them. It's general knowledge, you know. Uh, in a small county like that, if they can provide $1.2 million in cell tax, I think that will be amazing. I think it, <laughs> each person probably will go no doing nothing else than spending their, all the salary in dollar general, you know. That's, even then, they won't uh, be able to get that much cell tax. That's for sure. And also, Another thing, economic impact. County has failed to communicate to RNL as well as Claudia Market, as well as the people in the, uh, in the state park that what will be the effect of having Dollar General in the Paris Ferry Road. Also, another thing, the planning commissions in South Carolina, North Carolina, Maryland, Minnesota, they have all rejected Dollar General application. Then why a small community like Columbia, which is historic, we want to destroy it. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Let Columbia remain a historic place. People are here because they love historic Columbia town. They don't want big stores. If they wanted big store, we would have had a lot of big stores long time back. But we always denied that. Even the signs, even for my store, if it was a bigger sign, it was denied. Right, because it was not with the... Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carl Baker from Columbia. One of the findings, actually the finding that was provided for the planning commission to consider for denial of the project was the scale of the building. Um, I'd like to address the building and the site plan as what we're actually considering here. I don't really care that much about Dollar General or, or what. Um, 
the, the building is out of scale with the community and that is in conflict with the design guidelines. Uh, the approaches to try to make it seem in scale uh, is to put fake things on it, fake windows and doors. Uh, if you look around town, I don't see a lot of fake windows and doors. Uh, so I'm not sure how adding fake windows and doors makes it more consistent with the community. <coughs> the, um, the other big concerns are the, the, the signage. We have a road that has a 25 mile an hour speed limit on it. Uh, there's no need for uh, oversized signage. Uh, it's not like people are flying by and are going to miss it. The other concern that I have is uh, our new general plan, and I realize it's not adopted yet, uh, has the distinctive community strategy. It's something that the county's been working on from the blueprint. Uh, it's going in the RTP. It's, it's in the general plan. It's how we're supposed to be seeing these communities evolve as walkable, bikeable, transit, the whole thing is supposed to work. We're working with infill so that we don't have to drive everywhere. When I look at the design of this site plan, I see that if I want to walk to the store, I have to walk all the way around the fence, up across the entrance to the parking lot, and then across the parking lot to get into the store. If we want to have infill and we want to encourage people to have a different way of getting around in our town, we need to start thinking about how we design our developments and what we're going to approve. The, um, clearly, we don't have sidewalks all the way up and down Parrots Ferry Road to get everybody to the store to make that all work. But you have to start somewhere. This thing, whether it's got a Dollar General in it or not, is going to be around for many, many years. When we do get sidewalks in, you're going to have this goofy auto-centric development that doesn't fit in with what we're supposed to be planning for. I made these same comments for the ISMMD. I made them for the Planning Commission. I haven't seen the proponent make any concessions about changing the design of the project. When people, thank you. Hello, I'm Brian Cremeen, and I consider myself a resident of Columbia for the last 40 years. Uh, Randy Haddenvelt is my supervisor. I live up the hill a couple miles from here. Um, I just visited my mother in Arkansas, my 93-year-old mother, and I've done that over the last 30 years since she retired there with my father. He passed away. Anyway, going through the rural villages of the Ozarks that are a lot like the foothills here in California. Um, I first noticed in the early 80s these dour generals going up in small towns and uh, I didn't think too much of it unless I was driving at night and then those yellow signs dominated everything. Um, going through towns by the name of Toad Suck, Pickle Gap, Greer's Ferry, etc. Uh, not too long after the yellow signs were there, I began to notice other large neon signs like Hog Wild Liquor. Um, I, I did patronize that business, by the way. But <clears throat> then came Sonic Burger, you know, and so uh, Dollar General wasn't the only one, but it was a trend. Uh, I've heard words tonight like character, identity, context, setting, authenticity. And I think uh, all of them come into play um, with what we're talking about and the decision to be made here. Um, putting, uh, well, before I, get, I conclude, um, I wanted to uh, reemphasize what I've heard several people talk about the pedestrian needs on Paris Ferry Road. Uh, if we don't have a sidewalk, at least we could have a usable um, side on the road that people could safely bicycle or walk. Um, putting the Dower General here is like drinking a fine wine from a plastic cup. <clears throat> it's a matter of taste. Some people may not care, but most who I think 
have better taste would care. Please uh, vote in favor of good taste tonight. Okay? Thank you. Do you ever wonder why the Dollar General came to Tuolumne County and said, I want to build five stores? They don't like you. They don't like me. They're not going to shower you with tax money. They're at war. They're at war with Dollar Tree, the 99 cent store, and other dollar stores that you don't even know about in the Midwest and back east. And they're gonna, they're poised to win, and they believe the corporation with the most assets, brick and stone stores, will win. And then there will be none but the Dollar General. That's bad enough. But what if they lose? Is it gonna be a Dollar Tree? What if they become big enough that someone really wants to buy them or forces them to sell and it becomes a Walmart? The, if the building is not there, that can't happen. Thanks. My name is Tom Fraser. I'm a local businessman in Columbia and I've been a 40 some year resident of the area, and I can remember doing business with the Columbia Mobile Station. Okay, the Martins were uh, good personal friends of mine. I went to their funerals, I went to their weddings. Uh, that property the, was polluted then, and that property I'm sure is polluted now. Nobody knows that there was a well on that property. It's not mentioned in the environmental analysis on, on the, that was presented to the Planning Commission. They say they pulled the tanks out of there. They pulled two tanks. I personally watched the Martins put in a tank during the, uh, when they had to have unleaded fuel. It was too much money to have mobile do it. So they went out and bought a used tank. Now these are the days of single wall tanks. Nobody has ever core drilled that property. And when you went in a the bathroom there, they always told you, don't smoke in the bathroom. Don't smoke in the bathroom. Well, you know why? Because when you turn the water on, it came out of the well that was right exactly where on the environmental assessment on that property shows a limestone outcropping. That is where the well was. Okay, they covered that well up when they, when they supposedly cleaned the, the, the property up. They claim in the environmental assessment on the property that they took a diesel tank out. The Columbia Mobile never sold diesel. They never had diesel. There's, there, there is possibly another tank in there and I can tell you from personal experience that property is polluted. If anybody ever core drilled that property, they would see that property is polluted, I'm sure to this day, because it doesn't just go away. Now, I don't think this project should be allowed to be built on there, nor any other project should be allowed to be built on that piece of property until a, a, a thorough environmental assessment has been done on that property. I know the county signed off on it years ago, but that was years ago. And we, and we all know lots of things got signed off in the county years ago. Okay, now let's, before anything gets done on that piece of property, this project or any other project, let's run a core drill or just go dig up that well casing and take a water sample. It's very simple. And I'm sure you're going to find petroleum products in that water. Thank you very much. My name is Ron Sawyer. And um, we live just a couple miles from here. I've lived there for 18 years. And we're, as you can tell, we're passionate about this little community. And these people have flown in here on their corporate jet. And uh, when they're, if they can get their star built, they don't care whether we like it or not. Uh, if I wanted to, to move here as a private citizen, and I found all these people here didn't want me to move here, I sure as hell wouldn't move here. But these, but these people don't even care. They have no interest in what we care about at all. They're interested in dollars. And you, I feel like we shouldn't be here tonight, none of us. We shouldn't have to plead for this little community. If you people were doing your job, we shouldn't be here. Everything we've... Everything we've told you, you should have been able to figure out 
on your own and you should have rejected this project way before now i hope you will thank you hello my name is dio mills and i own this town some people would dispute that, but I've been uh, at the City Hotel many times during the feast, and no one has said otherwise, so you're talking to the owner. I do not like unfair competition, unless it's me. So I would encourage you to think about the people that have been here for so long. I would like to invoke the memory of Harry Wright, if I may. He would uh, dress in a top hat and walk up and down Columbia Street. I know some of you were children in those days, and looks like all of you were children in those days. And <laughs> think about the future. You are deciding what great-grandchildren will be doing here. Will they be uh, looking at bright neon signs and wondering what stars were? Or will they be able to walk out on the streets of Columbia one summer night and look up and see those twinkly little things that are disappearing from many of our night skies. I would implore you to uh, remember in 50 years, I doubt hardly any of us will be here. You're talking about the future. I coined a little phrase that I would like you to think about, and it's that our present to the future is the past. This is what you're offering many generations to come. The decision you make tonight will fade from our memories, but it will be lived by many more generations to come. Thank you. State Park. I've uh, been there eight years, and um, I can't stress enough the to counter uh, that it's that that far. It's not going to impart anything negative on the historic experience, but it does. These children, these 10,000, 12,000 children that come to our events, they prep before they come. So when they come, the excitement starts building, particularly when they see how rugged and all those exposed limestone and um, they can start picturing, and then when they enter the city, you know, the magic happens. So it really is part of, of the, the experience, the anticipation, getting the bite at a time. Um, and then my fear is the big box store, 9,000 square feet. Columbia have a residency of 2,000. Um, that's just the beginning. One takes residence, and then the others will try to move in, and that will really change the experience. Um, so please don't be enticed by the increased tax base. Uh, there are other ways to use that property. The owners could sell the property for more pr appropriate businesses that can expand um, the Columbia experience. Not to mention our youth really needs activities. They need training, fun things for them to start building their future as young adults. And, that might be a good location to combine the two, Columbia or Gold Mine, the Gold Rush experience, which really the whole world was affected by it. That changed our whole culture and um, so many uh, things in California. California never was the same after that. So uh, please take this to heart and um, I hope you make the right decision. Thank you. My name is Don DeValle, and I just recently moved here, and I know quite a few of the people that are here, and they're more eloquent than I am. Uh, but uh, I just want to recap what I heard, and I'm hoping that the summary might help you make your decision. And I, yeah, I feel like this is the problem with government. I'm standing in front of people, and I don't know what your decision is going to be, or how, if, you, if they got to you or not. I don't know. But we've talked about the traffic patterns. We've talked about the stoplight. 
We've talked about the lack of water. We talked about this box store here is not going to create any jobs. In fact, if they hire anybody, I'll bet that it'll be less than 19 hours a week, you know, minimum wage. It doesn't create any jobs here. We talked about the loss of mom-pop stores. Walmart killed a lot of mom-pop stores I used to go to. These people are break-even operations. I mean, the mom-pop stores here, and I, in some respects, I'm now one of them. It's a break-even operation. We love the park. I've been coming up here for 35 years again, and in that time, my children have come up here, and I finally retired up here. I'm working my butt off, if you call that retirement, because I'm helping restore the park in all my, the ways I can. And I talk to all the visitors that come through the park, and I send a lot of visitors here because I'm in the lodging business. And the Europeans love this place. They come here because they've got this romantic idea of an old West Goads town. And they just love it. I don't want to see them go by a box store here with a big ugly sign, and that's going to destroy their idea. We need tourism here. This will not bring us tourism. Tourism brings us dollars. Dollars are spent by the on the mom-pop stores, in the park, and around the park. We don't need a box store here. A bo and I just learned from listening to my neighbors, there's 12,000 uh, uh, these dollar generals, 12,000. One being built every six minutes. We don't need one here. There's one in Jamestown and Solzyville. I didn't know that, but now I do. Why do they have to come here? And if I want to go to a store, Sonora's only 10 minutes away. We don't need that here. Columbia is unique. It's the gem of the gold mining 1850 area. People flock here to see that. Don't destroy the corridor coming into it with an ugly box store. So, I'm, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it quits and just th uh, thank you for listening to me. And God, do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to the project? One more, and then I think we're going to take a quick 10 minute break. My name is <clears throat> David Kelly, and I'm a happy docent at Columbia State Park. <clears throat> Do we have to <clears throat> go to a higher authority to <clears throat> get this corrected, <clears throat> like they did in New York City a century ago with the miracle on 34th Street? If so, <clears throat> I make an appeal for a <clears throat> another <clears throat> another uh, miracle on uh, Parrots Ferry Road. <laughs> Lord, please keep Columbia historic. No Dollar General. <clears throat> and if you want to take these two gentlemen back to Texas and Tennessee so they can build a store right around the corner from the Alamo in San Antonio and Davy Crockett's house in Tennessee, I will not stop you. Amen. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? and I was born and raised in Tawana County. Um, I have been afforded the opportunity to travel uh, to numerous places and work uh, outside this community for lack of opportunity here. And uh, one thing that I really love is to be able to talk about Sonora and Tawana County 
in the community that I live in. I recently bought a house here in Columbia. And uh, one of the things that really stands out no matter where I go is people do not know where Sonora is. They go, do you mean Sonoma, where the wine is? No, but they do know where Columbia State Historic Park is. And they do know what it stands for, and they do know what it means. And they do know how important it is for our future generations. And when I think about my daughter and what she will experience, I hope it's the diggins and things like Columbia, Columbia State Historic Park and not the Dollar General. The Dollar General is not the history that I want my daughter to know and experience. And I think it's really important for you guys to understand and keep that in mind. And I thank you for doing what you were supposed to do in uh, facilitating the democratic process that has brought us all here today. And you are continuing to do that by listening to us. And again, I thank you for your efforts. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to the project? All right, we will take, it is 9.12, and so we'll take a quick 10-minute break. All right, is there anyone that would like to speak neutral, that is neutral on the project? Anyone that would like to speak neutral? The whole issue is that, you know, Dollar General is the only, you know, business we can attract to Alton County. That's what we're settling for. Like, I just don't understand that. It's like it begs the question of, like, what kind of place we want to have. Dollar General is not a stupid corporation. They do their research. They know where they want to go. There's a reason they want to come here. What is that reason? We need to ask that question and answer it. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anyone that would like to have rebuttal that would be a proponent, someone who spoke in favor of the project? that would like to have a rebuttal. Hi, Joe Dell with Cross Development. Believe me, I know what this can open uh, a rebuttal. So, uh, but I, I feel like I have to, to at least, uh, again, state that uh, Dollar General is not on trial here, although it feels like they are. Um, really, what we're uh, supposed to be reviewing here is the site development permit for a uh, commercial development, a 9,100 square foot building. And I, all the findings that were presented earlier um, from the Columbia Plan, uh, Chapter 15, 1 through uh, X or whatever it was, is um, all findings that I, you know, I think are not findings for denial at all. They're findings for uh, conditions uh, that the board can impose that we sit down to the drawing board and we continue to work on the plan to make it uh, compliant. But in order to do that, we have to have guidance from somebody to help us do that. Um, I can't go build a 1850 uh, wood structure um, and make it compliant to every aspect of the Columbia guidelines. Uh, in fairness, it, it just won't work. Um, but I can work with county staff. I can work with uh, the community to design the, the building that I'm proposing to build in which the tenant is proposed to be Dollar General, but it's truly just a commercial building where I can look at size, I can look at sign. I mean, there's other things that have just recently that can probably help guide this a little more. Um, I'm uh, able to shrink the building down. Um, I can go as low as 85 by 85, which makes it 7,200 square feet. Uh, that's something new that just kind of came to the table to us as developers uh, recently. So um, I can redesign the site, given that 85 by 85 building, to make it more compatible with the surrounding area. Um, landscaping is not a huge issue. I can plant ponderosa pines instead of the trees that are specified on the landscape plan. 
Uh, we hire a landscape architect to follow the guidelines uh, in the general plan and in the zoning ordinances. And, you know, I, you know, hope that she is. And if, if they aren't, then uh, we adapt. But so you guys have another option to not approve or deny, but approve with conditions that we do actually uh, try to conform to the guidelines a little better than we already have. I mean, I do feel we've come great lengths to conform to many of the guidelines in the Columbia Design Guidelines. Uh, maybe not all of them, some of which don't apply, uh, mixed use developments and things like that, but for commercial development for our particular uh, parcel, uh, I think we have um, gone above and beyond typically what we would see done in a Dollar General store. So um, I just thank you again for your time um, and would just ask that you, uh, for the findings of approval, the county staff is correct. Uh, in their findings for approval, and I support their decision as well, um, and I think you should as well. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in rebuttal? All right, seeing none, we will move to Sir Rebuttal. And please only address what was said in rebuttal. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything in their past performance that would indicate that they could successfully uh, do a good job of building a building that fits well into Columbia. So we should not uh, accept what he is saying that they can, because we've seen that they can't. They have not. They had quite the opportunity. They had quite a bit of guidance. They showed where their priorities were. Their priorities were in cost saving, not in getting the appearance right. Thank you. I think we're here tonight for you to make a decision based on the project that has been presented to you and the findings that exist now not on maybes for the future that you've heard from the proponents. When he said that the uh, staff will work to develop a good, a good design for him, when is the county staff paid to design places um, for developers or anyone that wants to come in here? I don't think that's their job. Thank you. Excuse me, I am looking for the people that did this research. Um, they are very credible sources. One works with Caltrans, one works with the state parks. They did an uh, intensive search and found that Dollar General, even though that's just the client and the renter, has a history of smaller uh, stores throughout the country, throughout the nation. So for uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Wildell, whoever, I'm sorry if I don't get your last name, uh, representing Cross Development, to say there's a late breaking news flash that they could reduce the size by some incremental amount, to me is nothing but uh, smoke and mirrors. And uh, I know I see through it. I hope everyone else does. I would say to Mr. Dell that he has had ample time between December 16th when just about all of these arguments were made until this hearing to make those changes, to ask staff to pull the project as proposed and come forward with some ideas on making changes that would meet our objections. And they have not done that, so I have a hard time believing that that is what they're going to do in the future. Thank you. You know, I listened all night long. I even spoke. And I heard what they had to say. I think it was a really nice sentiment. The truth is that I think, like the other gentleman said, it's all smoke and mirrors. If they really thought that they were going to try and fit into this community, they could have done it from the very beginning. Try and make it something that would fit in better, something that would be more 
um, productive for this county. It's been nothing but farce, and this is just another farce to try and get you guys to make a decision in their favor. I think you've been shown all night long that that's not the right decision. Thank you. As for making the buildings smaller, I think we have expressed that we don't want them. We don't want their products. We don't want their cheap stuff from China. And as for putting in Ponderosa pines, those pines are probably between 50 and 100 years old. Do you have any idea how long it would take them if they got a little seedling and put it in for them to be what they are now? Come on. He's mistaken if he thinks this is not about the Dollar General. It is about the Dollar General. It's about every single uh, big box store or chain store that wants to come into Columbia. We in Columbia do not need chain stores here. It would diminish our economy. The civics ec economic study that I gave you points to the fact that it is not good for our community. But it not only is it not good for our community because of that study, it's not good for our community because it doesn't, those types of businesses do not fit into Columbia. They are not 1850s. They will never be 1850s, no matter what they do to the building or what trees they plant with, where. Thank you very much this evening for coming out and listening to all this. You've had the opportunity this evening to listen to a great number of the people that live right here in this community, like myself, retired and moved up here um, to this community. Um, you've heard one reason after another thing from traffic to the size of the building to the proposed signage to the vendor uh, to the vendor that you know intends to occupy the building and I see the whole community standing before you saying please no we don't need that here and we need to protect our history for our children I teach gold painting in the park as a volunteer I've spent my whole life coming up here to get out of the Bay Area. I came up the hill to lower my stress to get away from Dollar Generals and other stores like that. We need this little nest egg to remain a little nest egg. And I thank you again for very much for listening to everybody tonight. And I appreciate uh, a no tonight for the store and the building. Thank you. <clears throat> for those of you who have not abstained from voting, there have been plenty of reasons brought before you as to why this should not go through. And I realize that you have to follow legal guidelines. This has to be set by law. As far as them negotiating with the size of the building, doubtful. If it was so, they would have gone below the 6,000 square foot and they would have already had the plan through without having to come to a committee. Um, once again, Joe Opie opposed to having this contract go through in this county. Thank you. It's specifically clear that the objective here is a business negotiation and they're working hardball right to the end. It's very strange that this was brought up about a reduction in size, late breaking news as somebody said. I have to look and say, I'm gonna say it. You know how a Texan, you know he's lying? His mouth is moving. <laughs> I've done business with a lot of Texans over the years. Some honest, some really shrewd. But what was just presented here, I consider an affront. It's, a, it's an affront because it was dishonest. This should have been brought forward before if they truly wanted to do a design, had the concept of a smaller store, et cetera. But to bring this as late breaking news and we can work on this at this late moment is a negotiation tactic in business and it's just business. It's all about business, money, making it happen. But the fact that it wasn't, it's not honest business. That's, that's what's wrong. It's lacking in integrity, and I'll go back, and I think that's the summary here with this whole concept. It lacks the integrity for this community. This community doesn't need that. And this just represented another piece of the lack of integrity that's being brought here, and it's clear. So please support your planning commission's denial of this project. Thank you. try to keep my voice down this time. I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to hear us tonight. Much hats off to y'all. You know, running business, uh, I had to meet certain criteria, certain guidelines, 
certain codes and I had to make all of my buildings fit. I had to make the business fit. I had to do this through plans, blueprints, coordinations with the county. They had to be inspected, stamped, and approved. Not at any point in time, if I had missed those deadlines or, or missed those approval times, I could not say, wait, let me restructure and redo what I need to be done, step one. They never afforded me the opportunity to say, but wait, there's more, just like some of these commercials we hear. Thank you for your time. Seeing no one else that would like to speak and serve rebuttal, we're going to close the public hearing and then I'll bring it to the board for questions. <clears throat> okay, first of all, let me, uh, well, let me say thank you to all of you who came out tonight. Uh, quite an impressive turnout. Uh, what can I say? And I have to tell you, when that little girl, wherever she was, got up here and spoke, I gotta tell you, you gotta feel good about America when your kids are willing to get up and, and speak like that. That took a lot of courage. I was very impressed with her. Uh, and this is, this is democracy in action. This is the process. It's clear that some of you didn't understand the process. It's the first time we've heard this. Uh, we read a lot of, a lot of pages. Uh, I kept saying it was 748 pages. It was 758 pages. And, uh, and then numerous letters and, and even things that came in today. Uh, a lot of, lot of work behind this. A lot of people did a lot of work. And a lot of people thought, got up here and did a lot of thoughtful presentation here. So I want to thank you for doing that. That's uh, part of the process. And uh, we, I think I speak for the board, we appreciate when you talk to us. A lot of people called me and talked to me about this. And I appreciate that because I don't know what's in your mind unless you talk to me. And I know the others feel the same way. So <clears throat> where am I in this thing? My DNA likes competitive business in the community. That's just where it comes from. I like that stuff. It's good for the community. But it has to be responsible. Uh, I love Columbia State Park. I love Royaltown. I take friends there. Uh, it is unique. Uh, this is a unique place. I live here too. Uh, not in Columbia, but close. And uh, <coughs> oh, you can't hear me in the mic, okay. Uh, thank you. So it's important we do this right. Now, <coughs> as for the proponent, it's not just about the building. I mean, buildings uh, have to be taken in context of what's gonna be in the building and what the impact of that business is when it goes in there. Uh, so. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't agree with you on that uh, topic. And, uh, and the other one is, we, uh, someone said we have to deal with what's been presented to us, and I agree with that. We can't be, we're not here to redesign, renegotiate a project here. Uh, so we've got to deal with the situation that's at hand. Now, <clears throat> here's some of my problems, the location. Several people mentioned traffic. That's a problem for me. I've come out on Springfield Road, not at school peak traffic hours, and tried to make a left turn on a Parrot's Ferry. I try really hard not to do that anymore. I don't like that turn. I don't like the lines of sight. I think it's kind of dangerous. I didn't like coming out of that road and making a right turn uh, because of the, the way you have to do it. So I, I just, I really don't like the current situation there. And uh, if there's excess traffic during school hours, then, oh, I would just never do that. So anyway, uh, I think we've got a traffic problem there right now. And my question I asked the county council, and she gave me an answer, uh, was there's a proposed mitigation for that problem. But 
Is it really mitigation if it isn't implemented? Okay. I, in spite of the answer that it may be under certain circumstances, uh, my history uh, with public works projects going forward and getting done on any length of time or any timetable isn't very good. Uh, they never put off till tomorrow what they can put off to the day after tomorrow, and they just don't happen on the schedule unless, unless they're there. So, uh, and I'm not sure that even solves the problem. Uh, Parrots Ferry Road is not my favorite road uh, to walk on. I don't think I would do that, uh, and certainly in, in off hours. So I think there is a problem with pedestrian traffic there, and, uh, uh, and by the way, whether whether Dollar General's there or not, I think that's a problem anyway. And, and maybe the county ought to be looking at that. And maybe the Columbia community ought to be looking at it like Jamestown looks at doing it and, and improving things. So <coughs> I, I, this isn't about dollars to the county. I, I don't know who got that idea. It's about what's right for the community in my mind. And <coughs> I, someone did get, go do an analogy that I liked uh, to the football game of changing the the decision when the, there has to be sufficient evidence to do that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just not at the point where I'm convinced that uh, we should change the Planning Commission's decision. So that's where I am. One thing I just want to make this point to Phil and Chris and some of the people that I, I think we 
that was a difficult decision dealing with those planning commissions but i want to say the process i think that we put in place works and i think that everybody got a chance to be heard and i think that the right things will be done for the community so i just want to share that um when it comes to dollar general i'm not a fan i think the things that they sell are low quality um but i also feel that that's not something that matters what matters is um well you get to vote with your dollars every time you choose to spend a dollar somewhere you vote whether you want that business to be in in business or not sitting up here it's not our job to decide who gets to be in business who gets to be a viable business that's the job of competition and that's an american value that is very dear to me so my decision has nothing to do with that my decision has everything to do with the aesthetics of the building the character um, and is it consistent with the policies and plans that we have in place we heard about you know impacts related to traffic or um, the historic character of the community the economic competition that it would impose on existing businesses um, the architectural uh, elements of the building the community identity uh, specific things like the signage uh, the impacts to the park and tourism um, so when it comes to some of these things i think really where i'm bothered the most is the architectural character i'm bothered by uh, the appearance of the signs that's the deepest flaw i see with the project is the appearance of the signs the color the materials the size uh, the font i looked at it there was examples in our our project that showed some of the old historical signs and there's different fonts some of those things really are what add to the architectural character and um, so i'm i'm not okay with the signs as they're they're shown the square footage of the building doesn't bother me. There's other buildings around that have larger square footage. That's not the problem. Um, it's, a, it's a, well, I'm not talking about, well, let me just finish. The, I'm not willing to vote against this project just because it's Dollar General. I don't like Dollar General. I won't spend my money there, but I'm not gonna vote against it because it's Dollar General. Um, I do feel that the project that's proposed is inconsistent with the Columbia Community Plan, and the sign specifically is, is a problem. The elevations of the building are also a problem. If you look at uh, the conceptual designs in our packets, there's a facade which uh, it was mentioned has fake windows, fake doors, and it, it appears cheap to me and it appears low quality. Um, I like pre-engineered metal buildings, but not with a cheap facade. And it, um, so I'm rambling now, it's hard not to, it's hard not to ramble after one of these things. There's so many things going through my minds. I think it's too difficult to impose conditions in this forum. There's a lot of subtle elements that matter. I think I, I wouldn't be opposed to this project moving forward if the conditions were right, but they're not right. And I don't think we can do that right here. So that's fundamentally where I'm at. So I'm going to have uh, the final word before we have a motion. And uh, first, I want to thank all of you. I, I really do appreciate the fact that you didn't come out just once, but twice now and before the Planning Commission. And I really appreciate that. And since um, I had the privilege of chairing this meeting tonight, I really do appreciate the respect that you showed um, in your thoughtful comments and the points that you made. Uh, last week, I was out here, I sat out um, at the site on Thursday afternoon for an hour. 
when school was getting out. And there, there are traffic issues. And uh, I have some very serious concerns about um, a number of the items that I read in this report that had to deal with traffic. The other piece, and I heard it time and time again, is what does Columbia State Park mean? Columbia State Park is to history. It is as significant to the California history as Yosemite National Park is to natural resources. I really do believe that. <laughs> and I actually, um, I think I heard someone mention, made a comment about that, uh, putting a Walmart or something in Yosemite. I don't think any of us would really ever dream of that. And so um, I, I do, um, I have not been convinced that um, this project meets the design review for Columbia. And um, certainly, again, Supervisor Hanfeld mentioned it um, with the football analogy. I have not been convinced in a way that I would overturn the decision that the Planning Commission made. So. <laughs> With that, um, I would ask my fellow supervisors to make a motion. I just want to make one more comment. Um, every other week, basically, our board meets and we, um, all day long. I don't know, somebody's mic talking. Thank you. Um, so, nine in the morning, first and third Tuesdays, all day long, our board's there. And usually by the end of the day, there's nobody in the audience. Nobody usually cares about what's going on. They have no clue, except for maybe Carol. Yeah, Carol's usually there taking notes, which is cool because at least somebody cares. But um, th this, ag this agenda item, this project, uh, really um, caught the attention of a lot of people. And like I said, most of the time people don't pay attention. And there's a lot of really important, this is an important thing, but there's always really important things that affect our county. People don't, they don't pay attention. So I just want to ask you to continue to pay attention after this. And not only when you're opposed to something, but try to be for something as well, because that's something that's really hard to do, is be for something to propose projects. People mention that they're, they're not anti-growth, they're for smart growth. And um, so I would encourage you uh, in the future to participate and try to help us promote prosperity in Tuolumne County. And so, with, thank you. With that, I'll make a motion to deny the project based on uh, findings 1A through B, 2A through C. I'll make a speech, but uh, thank you, sir. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Meetings adjourned.